Hello. What you see here in front of you is an AMD, uh, what's known as a, uh, an SEC, or a single edge contact, or single edge processor packaging design motherboard. Uh, some people call them, as, uh, in this case they call them slot A, and in the case of the Intel they call them slot 1. Um, now this uh, cartridge uh, or board based packaging, which is what you see here at the top of the picture, this baby here, okay, this is the actual packaging, okay, was well, around with Intel and AMD from around about 97 till about uh, 2000. And as I said, this is known as an SECC or single edge contact cartridge or single edge processor package. Um, basically, what's on it is the processor, uh, which is usually mounted in the middle, uh, and on the right, right hand side of it, or left hand side, depending, usually the right though, there'll be two little uh, cache chips, or cache chips as I've been corrected here on YouTube. Uh, the advantage of that was that on the original motherboard manufacturing designs, um, what you had was a, a, an onboard cache, and then you had the CPU then with no real cache on it at all. Uh, that changed with the 486, but it was still very, very slow. So what we did in this design was we put a bigger cache on it with the processor, so it was running a lot faster, and then it had the slower RAM and the slower hardware then attached to it. Okay. Um, there was a slightly less expensive uh, package called an SEC, which uh, Intel, or SEP package I should say, um, that Intel came up with for their Celeron processor. So or as we used to call the business, sell it on, you know. Sell it processors are basically Intel Pentium processors that didn't quite meet the spec of their, their faster, faster counterparts. So for example, you'd create a, a, a Pentium processor, wouldn't meet the specifications, so they're ending up with all these processors in a bin, basically. So the processor specification may be only slightly. So what they've done was, they said, well, rather than destroying all these chips and putting them in the bin, which I think is very clever, we basically recycle them and sell them on, tell people, look, the cache isn't working on these, we've disabled it, it's not working to spec, but you know they're good enough to do you know everyday things like maybe serve a few files or whatever, so sell it on. You know? We'll talk about them in another video. Um okay. This particular connection to the motherboard has uh, what's it now? We've got have 424 pins. Um, the AMD one, which is what's in here, is the same physical processor uh, slot. This is the processor slot here. Okay, it's the same physical processor slot as the Intel one, but the Intel one is 180 degrees in your direction. So if you look at the Intel one, you'll notice this slot is over here rather than here because they basically literally orientate the slot around uh, 180 degrees. Okay. So, um, the the little black things on the side, which is the same as the Intel, uh, these are retention brackets, so when you get this processor, um, you basically slide it down. I well, should have used my second hand there, I don't know. I want to use the one hand. <coughs> um, let me see now. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So basically what you have is, this is this the slot here obviously, right? So you've got your processor. Okay, so you can physically put the processor into it. Yeah. And then you can do a good old shove. Actually, now before you give it a good old shove, make sure these little catches here in the front are out of the way. Then you can shove. And then pull the little catches up. Pull this across. Pull that across. And then plug in the processor cooling fan, which has three pins. The reason for the three pins, by the way, is basically what you have is you've got uh, a positive and a negative and then a timing, uh, a timing one. Basically what the timing one does is it tells the motherboard how fast this fan is spinning or if it's spinning at all. And if it's not spinning, it'll basically shut down the machine. So that's it locked into place. And she'll pull them across. Now one of the one of the reasons for all this, you know, jiggery pokery on here is in most cases this motherboard will be or orientated inside the computer at this direction. Okay, so you have your front of your computer here is where your CD-ROM drives, your floppy drives, and so on. And what can sometimes happen is this baby here, because of the pure weight of it, will basically drop out and fall. And you hear do into the case. Now that's not good. You don't want that. And currently my cat's staring at me. <laughs> Sorry. So, so 
<laughs> what can happen is the the, the the processor can drop out of the machine uh, and uh, you know forward a massive toad onto the floor. Uh, sorry, just to let you know, my, my cat is currently staring at me and saying to, saying to himself, "What the hell is he doing talking to himself?" Well, I should hope I'm not talking to myself and people are actually watching this video and enjoying it. Um, we went through the motherboards before, so there's nothing, nothing, nothing great difference in this motherboard than the other ones. Uh, this is where your flash is. This is your uh, your flash boards, which can be upgraded uh, via floppy disk or in some cases uh, with a MicroStar motherboard that I can remember. That there probably are other ones. And uh, the MicroStar ones you can update it via uh, a little application that came on the CD. So you can update it in Windows rather than having to use a floppy disk, which is a good idea. I think a lot of modern motherboards are doing that now as well. Although, to be honest with you, I haven't flashed a BIOS even in my new machines. Um, like I'll show you now. This is the motherboard I put into a machine recently. And I still haven't had the pleasure of flashing it yet, you know. So, that's the motherboard I used in the machine recently. And I haven't flashed that one. Um, so, I haven't done it in a while. But uh, on this particular motherboard, you could do it via uh, Windows. In this case, Windows 98. Um, so that's the PC speaker now, rather than what we used to have. I'll show you now, let's get you on that. This is the sort of standard PC speaker you would have had in most machines, um, which would connect to a little jumper pinout like this, uh, and then it'll be obviously off board at the front of the case. Uh, this here is the PC speaker as it is nowadays. Okay, so most machines have a PC speaker like this. This is your backup battery, and so if your computer's running a bit funny, or you find that some drivers or plug-and-play devices are coming and going, you know, at will, uh, get yourself a couple of these, uh, CR2032s, and just replace that battery. They're not expensive to replace, and you should really replace them anyway, after about five years, um, as they will just, you know, fall apart. Um, this motherboard has, it's an AGP4X on this board, I think it was, it's 2X or 4X, I think it was 4X. Um, but the reason why I'm showing you this board is I've ha had it out and um, I wanted to show it to you because what I'm trying to do at the moment is I have his brother uh, which is, this is a, uh, this, what's this, this one's faster I think yeah this is an 850, that's an 850 chip in that one you don't want to have has a 650, ch 600 chip in that I should say and uh, what I'm trying to do at the moment is I'm trying to install a 3DFX video card onto it and you know show you a bit of 3DFX if you've never seen it before um, I've got a couple of 3DFX cards, you know, mainly one is 3DFX2, and I'd reckon anywhere from 1 to 10, uh, 3000s, you know, Voodoo 3, 3000s, AGPs, um, anywhere, like I said, from 1 to 10. I don't really know how many of them I have. Um, <coughs> I was never too impressed with them at the time uh, because of, you know, the, the, the way the drivers operated and that. But, but, as time has went on, as things have, have uh, you know, as as I, as I have matured, I suppose, you know, I've grown a great appreciation for 3DFX. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't like 3DFX was probably their price. I ended up going with uh, the Apocalypse 3DX instead, because I couldn't afford a 3DFX. Um, this is another interesting uh, sound card here, the Audio Real Vortex 2. I have all these sound cards. Um, I'll show you another one here, hold on. There's one from Creative. And then there's one then from uh, a company called Fort Media. Now uh, this company here made this thing called the Fortran. And if you have the uh, pleasure at the moment of owning a Samsung Galaxy S6, I think it is, which sounds very interesting. And um, the company who made this little chip here, I'll see if I can get it in without it going all blurry. Let's see now it will focus. Yep, the company that made this little chip here has also had the pleasure of creating the uh, sound chips for uh, the Samsung S3. Uh, is there anything else you can tell you about this particular slot? Well, there probably is. Um, uh, let me see. Um, what else is on it really that you might be of interest here? It's hard to know really. Um, yeah, I mentioned the cache was on board. And da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yeah, basically the main reason, uh, just to go through it again quickly, the main reason before we leave it, the main reason, the main reason for this particular design is to basically put that cache that was on the motherboard onto the processor. Um, I 
don't have a board available at the moment to quickly show you that, do I? No, I don't. Um, but basically that will allow you to, sh to take that cache off the motherboard, pull it on the processor down, and make things a hell of a lot faster. Uh, this motherboard is fairly integrated, apart from the fact that it hasn't got uh, an onboard video card. Um, it is a MicroStar motherboard, uh, but uh, there you are. This is your, your power options. Um, that's basically it. Hope you enjoyed this quick 10 minute video uh, and uh, I hope to see you back fairly shortly. And uh, you'd be glad to know the cat's no longer looking at me. He's thinking, yeah, he's definitely gone nuts. So uh, that's it. I'll see you later. Bye bye.